Hello and uh, welcome back uh, to this part two of our build project where once again we're looking at this rather fabulous uh, well blacksmith model is sold by Dark Ops but uh, I'm really looking at it to be some kind of local industrial building and the thing I was deciding about at the end of the last program was what I'm going to do with it in terms of how I'm going to base it up because I really like the idea of having this as a nice terrain piece with its own yard. And what I've got here is a piece of PVC um, which I like because it doesn't soak up water and therefore it remains pretty much inert and stays flat. Um, what we're looking at doing here is getting this building uh, attached to that and then looking at creating a gateway here and a gateway coming through here. One of the things I'm also thinking about is actually building up a raised area here so that goods, turn that round, um, not using this, but this is just by way of showing the position, goods would be delivered from lorries onto that and then winched in through there into the warehouse, which would mean that we've got to allow room for that, which I think there's plenty of, and that could even come round that corner. Uh, so that's one option there. The other thing is I'm looking to have gates here and here to create an access point. Now I've got some options there. I mean, one of the things that I'm using to build the wall, looking to build the wall with, is gonna be this phone board, a uh, phone call uh, board, which is uh, available at um, you know, most art shops. And that's gonna be fairly easy to cut out and create some walling with, especially when we're adding into that this textured brickwork paper, uh, which I've got quite a pile of, which I purchased for use in a Stalingrad project. Now this is really nice actually, in as much as it's, uh, it's textured wallpaper. Um, and the, the pattern isn't brickwork pattern, but because it's textured, it, it tricks the eye into making you think that this is actual textured brickwork, and that produces a really good result. So. As you can imagine, we could cut off a piece to about that height and have that going around there. Um, but the other thing I quite like the idea of is having more of a grandiose gateway. And this has just come through from Rubicon. It's a relatively recent release. So the idea of having a very grand gateway at these points here, and then maybe a bit of a return, but then just having a fairly standard wall is the type of thing that a lot of companies do. They put a lot of attention on the walls that you can see, street side, making them look very grand, but round the back, the bits you can't see uh, are not quite so cared for and attractive. So that's an option we've got there, and that's something I'm gonna be looking at. Um, one of the other things I've gotta think about is how we're gonna deal with uh, uh, covering this area here and how we're going to get the floor covering. But well, one of the things I've been doing is buying quite a few bits and pieces from Will's Kits. This is part of their OOHO Scenic series. And as you can see, they do things like the granite sets. Uh, they also do um, uh, other things such as the coarse stonework. Now that in its own right would be good for walling. You could you know, cut that through and attach that to that foam core board. But the one I really quite like for here, and these come in sheets, packs of four, is this York Stonework set, which, you know, as we can see, we could get some pretty good coverage out of that one pack. Um, so uh, uh, we'll, see, we'll see where we go with that. That's certainly one option. The other option, of course, is to cut all this basing off completely, um, just removing it uh, I, I wouldn't remove it from the building, but literally just taking a saw and taking it off around the outside and then doing the whole yard with cobblestones, which I think they, they are uh, very attractive 
product indeed. Um, but uh, that's something we'll have to make a mind up on and see where we go with that. But we've got some flexible options there. I've had some thoughts since I last spoke. I looked at this, uh, this is the 2mm um, PVC that I purchased. And to be honest with you, I'm a bit concerned about the thickness of it. I bought 2mm, if I'd gone with 3mm, I think I'd have been better off. So I'm actually going to put this to one side and do something else with it. Um, in the meantime, I bought this, it's a big sheet of hardboard, and that is going to allow me to base my model. Um, because what I have decided to do is uh, to take the existing model, let's take all the excess bits out of it, is to take the existing model, which as we can see here has got lots of um, uh, very nice paving around it, but which frankly is, um, is not what I'm after. Because the problem is, but once I put that on a 3mm base, and it's already on a 3mm base, that's going to give me 6mm of um, density, which I don't really want. So what I'm going to have to do in this case, uh, because I want a bigger yard, this would be fine if it was a standalone model, of course, which is what it's designed to be. But I'm looking to create something bigger. So i am decided to take some fairly drastic action, and using uh, just an ordinary uh, saw, I'm going to cut round uh, to try and uh, get the effect I want. That will then allow me to put it on this base here, uh, which will then allow me to pave that as I want. And I think I've decided that I'm going to go with a cobblestone look, because it is a fairly antique yard. So what I'm going to do is take this outside, put on my mask, because cutting MDF is a dangerous thing to do. Um, the particles of it are inert, if you get them in your lungs they are never going anywhere and ultimately if you do enough of it you're going to end up with one of those horrible lung disease that coal miners used to get. So <clears throat> well uh, uh, open environment where there's plenty of air, a well ventilated environment and um, also a mask are essential for cutting MDF. So I'm going to go and have a go at that and hopefully I won't completely destroy it, we'll find out in a few minutes. Right, I'm back. And the reason I'm looking like something out of Doctor Who is I wanted to show you the type of mask that I use when cutting MDF. You can get small paper masks that cover your nose, but frankly, they're okay for odours, but they're no good really for bits and pieces. Um, so this is a half decent one. It cost me about 15 quid, for, quid from Wix. Now, that's a lot of money for a silly mask, but at the same time, if you are using dangerous substances, and MDF is dangerous when you cut it, it's well worth investing the price of three pints of beer to avoid getting lung damage. So, there we go, that's that. First things first. Second things, let's have a look at what I have done with the uh, building. Okay, we can see I've cut it away here. Um, but let's, let's not pretend this was uh, trouble free. You can see here where I have uh, accidentally cut in with my saw. Now I'm not too worried about that, that's a repair that can easily be done. And it's certainly rough and ready in parts. But we have our old friend Mr Sandpaper here that's going to allow us to deal with that. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to go around that with a sharp craft knife, just cutting away anything that's a bit snotty. Uh, then hopefully we'll end up in five minutes time with a much tidier model. So I'm going to go away and do that and then we'll look at the final piece. Well, as final as it is at this stage. Let's take a look at that now that's um, been tidied up. Um, Tidy being a vague term because there's still going to be a few rough and ready edges but it doesn't matter because where we butt up our cobbles against the building I'm actually going to be putting a sort of little sprinkling of sand and dirt where dirt does accumulate at the edge of buildings so any change in level or slight variation really won't matter. The issue now about how we deal with that 
Well, remember what we've got to do before we do anything else, we're going to be plastering this. Um, but I want to have two things going at the same time. So the next phase, now we've got this, is to work out the size of our baseboard. Um, now the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to build some of the city walls, which I'm going to be using as the gates. Then, once we've established where the gates are going to go, that will then allow us to determine the size of our baseboard. So I can then cut that, and then while I'm plastering this, I can start building the walls to go around it. And we, while this is while this is drying, I can be getting on with the other half of the project. So very much a case of just doing the two things together because of good time management, really. Okay, so I'm going to get cracking and start sticking some of these gateways together so I can see exactly uh, how much space we're going to need and how big the baseboard is going to be. Let's have a look how that's going to square up on our sheet of hardboard. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to start squaring this up to be the right size now. So I'm putting my gate on the corner, putting my other gateway there. So I'm going to mark down here because again we want this to be flush on our board. This doesn't have to be precise at the moment, but it is just giving us that line to show us where that's going to go. We can take that off, because the next thing we need to know is how big the gate is going to be here. And also, what gate are we going to be using for that? Are we going to be replicating this style of gate? I think we are, so that's given us our first dimension. Now we need to know where this one is going to go here. So, I'll crack on and build another set of gates, and we'll have a look at that. Okay, well as you can see here, what I've done is I've made up these gates, I've also made up the wall. These gates aren't fixed in place. So the minimum size we would have is up to there, but remember we were talking about using this as an unloading bay. Well think logically, the unloading bay would not be blocking the gate. So what we probably need to do is to add a section of wall in, uh, and then have the gate coming out here after that. So I'm going to build this area up and then that will allow us to have that gate there. So the thing I'm going to do is, this is all pretty rough markings, but we'll do that. And then what I'll do is I'll get my ruler out and I will square this off to get exactly the right size base that we want. Plastering. Next phase of our project is going to be to take this model and add some additional texture to the walls. Now as we can see, these walls are beautifully laser cut to give an impression of a wall where the plaster is breaking away. So we've got the guidelines, we know exactly where we need to plaster. So we're gonna be working our way up to those edges and the relevant places and adding plaster to the wall to give it that three dimensional feel. Because one of the big issues, and let's be honest with MDF buildings, is that they can look two-dimensional, because they are, uh, in, uh, certainly in, at least in the way they're cut. Now, what am I going to use for this? Basically, just an old plate to put my plaster on, a palette knife, which is something I've only just started using. I used to use a butter knife, but a good friend of uh, Lard Island, Gary Chalk, a well-known, uh, really top-quality mother in his own right, uh, suggested to me that I should be using these. So. I went and splashed out the sum of about three pound on eBay, uh, and that bought me a whole set of about five palette knives. So what do I use to plaster? Quick drying polyfiller. Now, I don't know uh, anywhere else in the world, but polyfiller is basically the type of filler that you would use if you had a knock in the wall. Um, in this situation, um, the quick drying stuff is really meant for very small nicks, which you just fill it in, Five minutes it's dry and you sand it out. 
Uh, and that has a huge advantage for us because that quick drying time allows us to put the plaster on the building um, and then in five minutes we can polish that plaster finish up in the same way that a plasterer would do in your own home. They apply the plaster, then they apply water and polish that up. So we want to just get some out, out of the tube and it comes out pretty much like toothpaste. The first bit's always a bit difficult to get out. So let's get a bit out. We don't want to get too much out and make sure we're going to put the lid on that. And then we're going to start applying it. So let's see how that's done. Well, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to change the camera angle slightly. I'm hoping you'll see some of this. As you can see, just take the palette knife, put it on and smooth it out up to the edge of where the uh, engraved block work begins and ends. Okay, this is a new tube, so it's not... So you can see we're really putting this on very roughly. You don't have to put it on very thick, and it'd be part of the cleaning up process that we're going to be doing shortly is potentially going to be to Um, thin that out a bit. Again, don't worry if you're getting on places where you don't want it to be. You can always get it off. And who's to say where the plaster is and where the plaster isn't? Uh, if this was a wall without these uh, beautifully engraved stonework, it wouldn't be a problem. You can just splash it all over. But in this situation, we want to make the most of that and preserve that uh, that block work because it's uh, it's a great look. It looks fabulous. And that's a bit too much. So just you can just put it on a tiny bit at a time and uh, work to the lines of the model. Now, what I'm going to do is we're going to work down here on this side. Trying to keep it off the, the actual engraved stonework. But hopefully you can see where that's coming from. Now, it's not going to take long before that's dry, so I'm just going to go around to the next wall, which fortunately isn't as fiddly, and uh, we can just start applying it in a bit more of a uh, liberal manner. So having done two sides, what I'm going to do now is I've just got some water and I'm going to take the water on my finger and I'm just going to rub it over the bits that I've already done. And where we've got excessive amount, I'm just going to push that off the edge of the model basically. Um, and you can see this is allowing us to clean up where we, if there's any messy bits just really push that plaster about so we get some uh, control over where it is and where it's going. So any little gaps, I'm just using my finger to push that into them. Any bits here, I'm again I'm using my finger to move this plaster around in a way that uh, means we can fill in anywhere that we've met, uh, uh, missed. And that, mm, just tidy that bit up. As you can see, that provides a much tidier finish to that, but also gives us a little bit of detail. Now that hasn't taken long, so I'm not going to do that side yet, but I am going to crack on with this side. And I'm sorry if uh, the camera angle isn't great, uh, but I obviously need to be holding it at the angle that is optimum for me uh, to do this rather than the optimum angle for the camera.
Okay, so here we are. We've got our uh, plaster building and we've got our baseboard. Uh, we've also got our gates all ready to go. Uh, and now we're going to start putting the base together. I decided to make it fractionally bigger. One of the advantages of that is that when you bump it, you bump the edge of the base rather than bumping the model. But the thing I'm going to do now is put my gates in place and then that would allow me to start building the rest of the walls around it. So, remember how these are going to go. And uh, that's going to be something like that. Let's just check that for the gate. Okay, that should actually be a bit closer to, to there. Right, so I'm going to make a mark there. Then we're going to use our trusty hot glue gun to start putting these in place. So, first bit here. I'll stick that on again, just making sure, whoops, sorry, that's got to be an open gate, making sure that that's just back, but square. And now we're going to put this on and do the whole of that return wall. Keeping that close to the edge but not absolutely on it. And we'll then repeat that process over here. What I've also done is I've also put some foam board in the back of that building there because I really want uh, to cover that in brick paper and for that reason I'm not actually going to be uh, sticking this in place. There's going to be two bits of walls going in here but for now I'm not bothered about them. I can do them once everything's stuck in place. I want to get this wall done here. So let's uh, turn that round so you can see, I know exactly where I'm going here, I know exactly where I'm going there. These are very grand, that's the entrance. This is going to be more of a plain brick wall. So I'll take that off and let's get looking at that. Okay, now for the walls, what I'm going to use is foam board. Uh, this stuff is ready, readily available in art shops. It's very lightweight and therefore pretty easy to cut. It's got a foam core uh, <coughs> with sandwich between two sheets of paper. Um, so we're going to have to start working with this. What first thing I'm going to do is measure up and see how high I want the walls. Um, well, up to the up to the finials on those walls, it's just under one and a half inches. So I'm going to measure just under one and a half inches, and the distance on that side is about eight and three quarters. And on that side, seven and three quarters. So let's get cutting that. Okay, what I'm not going to do is rely on precise measurements to check this out. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to take it to the opposite edge. And then the mark on there where it all comes to an end. Then, using a set square, otherwise known as an eye, I'll cut the end off. This doesn't matter actually, and you're going to see why as we go through it. So, if you've got an edge that's bashed about a bit, it doesn't matter, just put that at the bottom and keep the top neat and clear. I measured that by eye, then I just saw it would fit there, chopped the end off. Measuring it just that little bit too long, quarter of an inch, means that you don't get a situation where you go, oh, blind I'm a quarter of an inch short, or an eighth of an inch short, which is even worse. Because when it's a quarter of an inch short, you throw it away. When it's an eighth of an inch short, you try and go with it, and then you lose some rigidity in the model because all that's holding it in place is the glue at the bottom. This way, at least we've got that there. The other thing is, what I want to do is create some buttresses for which I'm just going to use bits of offcut, which I'll cut that down the middle, cut 
that through at an angle. And I'm going to use that to strengthen the wall there. Actually, I'm going to cut that a little bit lower down, and you'll see why when I come to do it, because I'm actually going to put a little paper cap on that. So let's get the other bit, do it to match. And I'll put a little paper cap on that, which is going to look like a tile, because the other thing I'm going to do is put some coping stones on here. Hot glue is the wargamer's friend, but remember when using a foam board, if you get the glue too hot, it just melts the foam. And that is not a good look. I'll pop that on there. And take this one, and again, all along the bottom. Wiping off any hot glue, which if you do remember, it is bloody hot. Almost volcanic standards. So put a quick bit of hot glue on here, and we'll put those buttresses on. They don't have to look good. I don't know what we're going to do with this wall, maybe a bit of plaster, just maybe brickwork. But as long as they're in place, they will give the impression that we're looking for because uh, walls, a standard nine inch wall like this would not support its own weight for any extended distance so it would be reinforced with piers that were larger and that's precisely the effect that we are getting there. So now to reinforce that, what am I going to do that with? Hmm, let's think. All right. Well, I, I could have thickened that up with just a bit of more foam board, but I've just gone out and got an offcut of relatively thin uh, blue stuff, which is a high density polystyrene. And what I'm going to do is just roughly cut something that looks kind of, oh, that should be all right. right. Because the good thing is, if it doesn't look all right, we can trim it down and change the shape. So just, this is way too big, but as a starting point, it's fine, so we'll put that in there. I think that's too big all round, actually. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, how high is it? It's a bit too high. Take the top off. Let's get the height right, first of all. Now that's about right. Then I'm going to put a cut in here. I'm going to put my glasses on for this because uh, it's all a bit detailed. And take a small slice out of that side, being careful not to cut through all the way to the top. This is one of those things you think, well, this could work, and if it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And then do a very, very similar thing on the other side. Cut down there. So what we've effectively got is a piece that looks like that with a lip on two sides and we'll get that and tuck that on there <laughs> I've cut too much out of it oh that's okay that's not a problem we'll just cut a bit off the bottom until it fits that is going to look fine as a as a corner piece as we can see once we get that glue in there that looks like a corner pillar well, we could put a finial on the end, but I think that might be a bit excessive, to be honest with you. And there we have it. Now, you will notice that some of these uh, areas have got gaps on. That's to allow for the way... Uh, I think what they're assuming is that you have a long wall and then you have a wall going off. 
But these are going to be pretty easily filled um, once we get to the point where we're going to put the brickwork on. There's a, all of these faces here have brickwork in there. So I'm going to use our brickwork paper to fill these gaps. What I'm probably going to do actually is put a bit of uh, rough plaster in and then fill that over when we get finished. But that is the basic wall in shape. So as we can see, like most companies, they're trying to impress their customers who are walking by, seeing the very grand gateways, but round the back, it's a very different story. Um, what I want to do is put some coping stones on this, at which point I'll put an even more impressive coping stone on this. Um, and then I think we're just going to go with brick paper around there. But let me think about that. This is very much a project that's evolving as it goes. Um, uh, I think part of the joy of a built project like this is you think, cool, that's a good idea. I could do that. And having a bit of fun. And just thinking about that loading bay, this is the type of offcut that could do a very nice job of just providing a raised area um, for, uh, for goods to be unloaded on. Um, but still thinking about that. Well that's all for this time. Uh, I think I need to go and uh, exercise the little grey cells before we uh, continue to the next stage. But I am happy that we've got the model to the point that um, we've got the building done, uh, largely, uh, and we've got the main walls up. And from now on in it's going to be a case of adding more and more detail. I am thinking, and this is very much thinking out loud, that uh, I'm not going to cobble the yard until last. I think maybe what I need to do first of all is get that building in, the final walling in, and that raised loading bay. Um, and I think once that's in, we're kind of approaching the point where we're going to be finishing it off. But that's all for now. I hope uh, this has proved interesting or at least vaguely amusing in watching me make such a bloody awful cock up of what is in its own right a really nice model. Don't forget if you want to know what's going on on LARD TV and we've got an awful lot coming up for you over the next uh, few weeks and months then please do subscribe um, and follow us on our YouTube channel uh, so that you can be there first with the news of what's going on. Uh, for now that's it and thanks for watching this build project.